arguably. I mean, he lost his number seven shirt at the start of this season, didn't he, as well? Which... Number six shirt. Number six shirt, sorry. this uh, Yes, yeah, so, sorry. Number six shirt at the start of this season as well, which I don't know, was it maybe a sign that this would be his last year at Hull? Yeah, I think we all thought that um, maybe we were looking to the future with giving Connor the six. Um, whether or not Connor is going to be the off half, I don't know. But I think for Connor, the number six meant more than it did to the club to not give it to him if that makes sense um so yeah, yeah I, I think we he, he's been ham- he's had some nasty injuries you know last year the constant recurring concussion really did play havoc and to be honest you always felt that he was only one headbang away from having to medically retire um and i do think that that possibly affected some of the way he's played more recently Yeah, I, it, it, I, I think he'll be remembered from his Super League stint on both sides of, of the city as being an entertaining player, won't he? Certainly, yeah. if nothing else. Yeah. Well, that and McDonald's, but... <laughs> um, from someone who is leaving Super League to someone who's already left, Sarah. Yeah, so St. Helens England prop Luke Thompson has been sold to NRL side Canterbury Bulldogs for an undisclosed fee after failing to take a pay cut. The 25-year-old, who had spent his entire career at his hometown club, was due to move at the end of the season. Thompson spent 13 years at Saints and made his first team debut in 2013. He played 165 times for St Helens, helping them to win the 2014 and 2019 Super League Grand Finals, as well as being part of the side that lost lost the 2019 Challenge Cup final to Warrington. Did you see this one coming, Mark? Yeah, I, I didn't see them. I didn't see the club throwing him under the bus so much by making it all about him failing to take a pay cut. Um, I, I, did, I wasn't aware of any murmurs of that issue at all until this happened. But you have to feel like it. You know that must have been part of the posturing to get his move speeded up. Um, is is going to have arguably a, a more meaningful season in the NRL this year, um, and then actually get himself more preparation time for next year, more more of an off season uh, that he'd get if he was staying in Super League till the end of the season. You you could say as well. So for the sort of looking forward to 2021 and the World Cup and all that excitement, I think this is better for Luke Thompson to go now than to to hang around. Um, yeah, because let's face it, we don't actually know when the season's going to finish. Exactly, yeah. So so uh, you could sort of... There was always murmurs, I think, and, and Canterbury need a, need a boost as well because, let's face it, they've been, at, you know, they've, they've been dog shit to, to start the, the season pretty much so they need a lot more than Luke Thompson but it doesn't surprise but me he's a and, start. and I can't see how many Saints fans won't wish him wish him the best uh, really uh, as well as, as he goes you know he's going to better his further his career rather than you know anything else um, and uh, and I think the, the pay the pay issue kind of things just uh i don't think it, that was on luke thompson it's probably more agents playing around or, or whatever but uh saints have got a fee and you know Amy mcmanus has come out quite a lot saying how saints are fucked because they can't use the facilities to make money from so yeah financially they're in a they're, you know they're in a bad place just like all the other clubs are and so surely that fee helps and not having to pay his wages so. for the rest of the year because he already would have been on a good wage after he got his new contract. When was it? Would it have been last year or the year before he got a new contract? You'd have thought he was went up in, in terms of pay there as well. So two things that help St. Helens financially. So I think even more so the club should have, you know, <laughs> waved him out of the door with a fond farewell rather than a, a bit of swipe. But I don't think the fans are looking at it as a bit of swipe. And, um, you know, they're... they're, they're proud of the player that's come through the system and, and, and is now moving on to play in the NRL. So good luck to him. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, it does. It leaves a bit of a bad taste in your mouth, doesn't it? It's sort of, 
I guess, I guess the handling of it, you know, the announcing that it's because he wouldn't take a, a, a reduction um, and I don't know, how was it all dealt with and was it that actually they quite wanted him out the door or... You just don't know, do you? I mean, it Although leaves would... a hole in the side, doesn't it? Yeah, you have to say that part of it. It does leave yeah. a hole in the side. So, But they're um, meant to be looking to bring in Joel Thompson, who... Um, should be coming in from next year, but you never know. That might be progress forward. But he doesn't quite fill the same position on the field, but he can, you know, help them out in as, a, as another experienced forward. That, that yeah, I guess my out. only question would be is when is he actually going to be able to fly to Australia? Well, he's, he's, he's there. He's gone. Oh, he's, has um, he? I think League Express, he was quoted in the League Express sort of saying he expects to be able to play from early July, so... Oh, I'd missed that. Yeah. Um, to be honest, I didn't read the full article myself. I just read the headline. So let's... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Let's... We've already given League Express their uh, shout out. Yeah, he's uh, targeting. Um, he jetted off to Australia on Saturday, targeting <laughs> a July NRL debut or debut. Yeah, because he'll have to wait two, at least two weeks, where a. That's it. Mandatory 14-day isolation period before joining his up with his uh, new teammates. So um, I think so. Looking at the weekend of the fourth and fifth of July, they play South Sydney. So that'd be interesting. He could be going up against his uh, compatriot uh, Tom Burgess in that one. So that might be an mm. interesting way to get it going. Yeah. Shall I move on to the signing from Featherstone? For Featherstone. If you want. Yeah. So they've signed uh, former Canterbury and Cronulla star Famunu Brown. <laughs> Lots of vowels, Brown. <laughs> uh, and he's going to join Amanu. the club with immediate effect once the UK competitions restart. Uh, the 25-year-old utility has played 37 NRL matches throughout his career and has represented Samoa at international level. So presumably he'll be all set to go down to Doncaster next year for the um, Samoa matches. Yeah, you'd think he'd be in and around that Samoa squad. I don't think this helps him in that regard, going and playing in the championship. Um, but it's a you know a good signing for Fev, signing someone mm. who's, a, who's a who's played relatively recently at international level and has some some reasonable. Uh, NRL experience. He can play anywhere really in the backs as well So or, or at hooker. So they, they've got a player here who, who they can put into a lot of spots before they find like the, the place where they, he's going to sort of make his own in that in that squad. Yeah. No. I mean it's it, yeah it seems like very very good business for Featherston really doesn't it? Uh, it seems that way. I mean it's a big story for them I certainly think so. Well done to them for pulling that deal off. Um, do you want to give us the the other championship bit of championship news as well before I run through the stories that came out today. Yeah, so Toulouse centre junior Vivi has signed a new deal that will see him stay at the club until the at least the end of 2022. The 30-year-old joined the French club from Hull KR midway through last season, scoring six tries in 12 appearances so far, and he's earned eight caps for the USA. So, yeah. I guess good business to keep somebody on that's a decent player. Yeah, someone who again is an international. <laughs> um, yep. And also someone who's got a bit of. It's shown that, albeit inconsistently, he was capable of performing at the Super League level. Mm. Um. So from a French team to a French player, we, we move on to Wigan Warriors fullback Morgan Esquerey, who's left the Super League club. Shocker, no one knew this was coming um, yep. after they agreed to terminate his contract by mutual consent. The 28-year-old France international began his career with Catalan's Dragons before moving to Wigan in 2017. He made 47 appearances and scored 14 tries during his time with the club uh, and last season went on loan to Wakefield. Of course, he won the World Club Challenge in his second game with Wigan back in 2017 and played from the bench in the 2018 Grand Final win for uh, for Wigan as well. So um, I, I must say that I, I'm I'm not obviously... It, the official confirmation didn't come as a shock because we had unofficial confirmation for the last week and a half or so, but even the unofficial confirmation uh, didn't come as a, as a huge shock with um, 
Morgan being at the stage where he is at his career, I think he he should be he should be trying to play first team rugby league, and he wasn't going to play first team rugby league regularly at Wigan. There was no way for Wigan to really give him game time other than send him out on loan anyway, and his contract was up at the end of the season. So this means he can now get himself a you know a, a contract for this the end of this season and the start of next season. So echo kind of most Wigan fan sentiments, which is thanking him for his service, especially early on in 2017 when he filled that gap for Sam Tompkins' injury and uh, good luck to him in the rest of his career yep do we we expect Salford to be his landing point I think that's the the talk isn't it with then Nile Evels going to Castleford yeah I mean it's logical that Salford will need a new fullback for next year um, and if this can pave the way for sort of some deal to be done with Castleford to to see Nile levels go now, you might then think that that could end up having a few financial benefits for Salford potentially with Nile levels probably being one of their top earners. Um, and maybe they can get cast to play, pay a small fee for this. Yeah, this I mean, year. I like Evels. I think he's a good player, but on, equally, you know, Escar is a, a good signing, I think, for Salford, isn't he? I think he'd fit in well. Um, He's got his weaknesses, which is why I don't think Wigan ever mm-hmm. kind of saw him as the permanent long-term first choice in, in his position of choice fullback. But at the same time, he's an exciting he's an exciting player who can do some good stuff that that entertains people. Yeah. So like you say, you know, it's not it's a step down for potentially for Salford, yeah. but it's not a huge one. Yeah. I... Yeah, I suppose it's it, yeah, but I mean, Ev- I think um, Escar has got a little bit more flamboyance than uh, Evels had, hasn't he? Oh, Escar has got a little bit more flamboyance than most players in the league, hasn't he? It, yeah, it kind of does everything with a little bit of uh, flamboyance, whether it's making yeah. a knock on or so, scoring a try. So, so he might look... be, yeah, he, he, he's maybe going to cost you points, but he's going to score your points as well. Yeah, and is he, is he, he's um. He can be an edge of your seat kind of player, can't he? As well, because he's so quick over the short distance. For both, for both sets of yeah. fans. Yeah, yeah. Um, elsewhere today, uh, it was confirmed halfback Oliver Russell has signed an extended contract with Super League club Huddersfield Giants until 2022. So this is them signing a, signing up another one of their young squad members um, mm. and potentially their long term halfback if. You know, Aidan Caesar is impressed enough to to earn NRL attention. Uh, potentially, Oliver Russell could could be the the number seven in in years to come for Huddersfield. So, um, just add into what it's probably three or four weeks in a row now, isn't it? That we've talked about Huddersfield signing up one of their youngsters on a on a two to three year deal. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it does seem to be that they are taking that approach, doesn't it? Yeah, putting their faith in youth. Um, for their faith or their bank balance <laughs> um, another area that might be seen as putting your faith in youth because the uh, Super League will be put, putting the reserve grade on hold for 2021 as part of cost saving measures um, it's sort of estimated that basically they're going to lose out 200,000 or so of their Sky distribution from, from the the rebates from the gap in, in play and, and not fulfilling all the fixtures and that's Therefore, the hundred thousand or so that that the reserve team seem to cost maybe is is a, is is a measure that they need to pull out of for the for the for next year as well as this year. Um, an under 19s competition will be reinstated as well to replace the under 18s that we were due to see this year. So, um, so obviously it's kind of a shift back to what we saw until this season, which is a, a backward step, Sarah, but an understandable one. I was going to say, it's, it's, it's a real shame, isn't it? Because I just felt like we were finally getting to the point of having a bit of joined up thinking with like the sort of academy, whatever you want to call it, set up. And now we're sort of going backwards again. So I really hope it does kickstart properly um, again after next season. Yeah. And we don't lose the momentum we've started to just slightly build. Yeah, let's hope so. Let's, let's hope in any sort of future thinking... Um, that that the game has to be able to deliver on from 2022 onwards. The reserves can, can some sort of reserve grade can come back into that way of thinking. Um, and then and finally for the regular news this week, which you brought to my attention, Sarah, and we couldn't not 
um, do this this story that that was reported today about Warrington Wolves winger Tom Lynham, who is recovering from his injuries after 